Oh, new tide from sunny Honolulu. This is Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome one and all. We know that Hawaii is the most beautiful climate in the world. However, we do have a situation when that beautiful sun hits walls of buildings or homes, the sun's radiant heat tends to penetrate through the wall and into the living space, and we've got to get rid of that heat somehow. Why not just decrease by a large margin the amount of heat going through that wall? That is exactly what our guest, Gene Rooney, president of Hawaii Architectural Sales, is the president and owner, and we're gonna be talking about vertical exterior walls. And I will let uh, Jean describe that. And I would say that, it, oh, I have to say, this is a, a private enterprise coming onto a government site. We are not endorsing Green uh, Jean's products. And we, this is here for strictly educational purposes only. Need to say that. So on that cherry note, please take it away, Jean. Uh, good morning, Howard. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we are here to talk about uh, ventilated cavity rain screen systems. So uh, a ventilated cavity rain screen system is where you have a airspace between the cladding portion of your walls um, and your structural part of your wall. So um, maybe we could bring up the first slide here and uh, talk about, let, let's start by talking about the two portions of a wall. So every wall uh, generally has a structural component to it. Uh, that could be a, a uh, steel gauge framing, it could, could be uh, concrete, could be hollow tile. Um, and then on top of that, in, in front of that, you have another portion, which is uh, typically used in most places. Sometimes we don't always use it here, but it's a cladding. So basically, um, uh, it could be EFIS or it could be a hardy plank or it's something in front of the wall that's non-structural. It usually serves a couple of purposes. One is decorative, makes the the building look nicer, and the second of all is it protects your structural wall um, from the elements. So um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so either that cladding can be, uh, you know, um, applied directly to the wall, in the case maybe of like a hardy plank or an ephus, or um, that cladding can be uh, offset from the wall by a little bit, and you can create an airspace behind that cladding, and that um, cladding, that airspace serves two purposes. So this, um, the first purpose was, or the first way this uh, cladding was first designed was called pressure equalization. And the purpose of introducing that airspace was to reduce, was to create a, a, a cavity, a small cavity that reduced the, that equalized the pressure between the interior and the exterior of the building. And the goal here was to stop water and air infiltration into the building. Because if you've got your internal pressure and your external pressure are the same, your water's not going to penetrate into your building and run down and run down the, the, you know, the side of the building. So that was where the idea of rain screen cladding came from. So rather than having your cladding be directly applied to the building, we're going to move the cladding a little bit off the building, create an air pocket that equalizes that equalizes the pressure. So uh, if you can go to the next slide, you can see some of the different types of material that are used for cladding. Okay. Um, it can be really any material, metal panels are common, um, 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 fiber cement panels, concrete panels, um, um, a, a technology that I like that we'll cover a little bit more in here is like porcelain panels, but can also be any other type of ceramic panels. Uh, terracotta is a very popular material used in uh, Europe quite a bit. So the cladding is different from the structural wall, okay? So if we go down to the next slide, um, so just basically just talks about the cladding is non-structural. It's just aesthetic. It sits in front of the wall. Um, it's it's um, it's not carrying the loads of the building. All that is done by your your structural wall behind it. Okay. So these rain screen systems um, 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 decrease the amount of um, de 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 sorry decrease the pressure and the amount of air and, and water that go through. Uh, and they do decrease the sun by a little bit. So go down a couple more slides. So um, go down to slide number six. We're going to talk about a ventilated wall system. So the difference between a, a standard uh, 
pressure equalized system and a ventilated system is we greatly increase the space, okay, between the cladding and the wall. So now we have a ventilated cavity that's also open at the top. So basically, um, this, this, your cladding now is acting as basically a sunscreen as well as uh, a, an aesthetic feature because the heat that reaches that cladding uh, is far enough away from the wall that while it may heat up the air in the, in the cavity, that air is quickly vented, hot air rises. So cool air is brought in from the bottom, the hot air quickly rises to the top. And now we are equalizing the, 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 the temperature. Okay, so that um, all that solar radiation that uh, you mentioned is now it's heating up the cladding portion of the building, but it's not heating up um, the structural wall. So in the diagram here, you can see a structural wall here. And, you know, one of the elements here you see on, is this exterior inst insulation on the wall. That's actually something new for us here in Hawaii. Uh, it's typically um, we had... Um, insulation, maybe if we had studs, we had insulation between the studs, or we had a concrete wall or a hollow uh, metal wall, that was considered enough insulation. Only recently in the building codes have we required this, this, this exterior insulation on the outside of it. So if you look on the, uh, on the right side, you can see how the sun hits the exterior of the building, and during the course of the day, um, it greatly heats up. Okay, so while our ambient air temperature, um, uh, as we were talking about before, Howard, before we started, our ambient air temperature in Hawaii is, is, is almost perfect year round. I mean, 75 in the, in, the, in the winter, 85 in the summer, might get to 90 degrees a couple of days of the year. Um, but there's very little temperature difference between what we would like the temperature to be inside and what the outdoor temperature is. I mean, it's why. Most of the year, everyone's happy sitting in their lanai as long as you're in the shade, right? It's very comfortable here in Hawaii as long as you're in the shade. And the second you get out of the shade, things change, right? It's, it's Even though the air temperature may be 79 degrees, once that solar radiation starts hitting your skin, um, you, you, you start to burn and, and things go up. It's exactly the same thing with a wall system. So once that solar radiation starts uh, hitting the wall, it's gonna go up into the hundreds of degrees and that heat's gonna start transmitting through the wall. Eventually it's gonna start heating up the interior airspace of your building and you're gonna to have to turn that air conditioning on. Um, or you're gonna to have to go sit outside in the lanai if you don't have air conditioning. Um, so by moving this cladding outside the wall, it's basically a sunscreen system um, for, your, um, for your house, for your building. Basically that cladding um, is now either reflecting uh, it's reflecting a good portion of the of the heat, if depending upon you know the color or whatnot. But even if it's not reflecting that heat, it's really only heating up the cat the air in the cavity, okay, between the wall and the cladding. And that hot air is going to rise up and out the top before it has a chance to increase significantly uh, in temperature and then translate and then transfer that heat uh, into the building. So that's the, the basic concept uh, of, of a, a ventilated cavity system. Um, you can see here, if you can go to slide, uh, go to slide uh, 10, so you can see this, um, you can see this in action here. Basically the sun is hitting that rain screen system and some of it's reflecting off, but some of it is transmitting through it, but it just goes up and out. Gene, is that what they call the Venturi effect where the a hotter air automatically rises in a given yeah, space. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the, that's basically yeah, you know how how rain stream cloud systems work. We call it the, the on slide twelve. We call it the chimney effect, uh, Venturi effect. Mm -hmm. A little more technical name for it, but yeah, it's basically hot air rising. So, um, and we can use different materials for this. You need metal panels. Um, on thirteen, we show a, a honeycomb panel, which also this is called a double ventilated system because the panel itself is basically got perforations has basically got um, uh, holes in it that allow the heat to, to, again, to dissipate. So the more ventilation, the better. On slide 14, you can kind of see what it looks like installed. You can put this material, you can put a cladding material um, on top of any other uh, uh, wall system, regardless of how, the, you know, whether it be a, a stud wall or a concrete wall, uh, basically attached with clips. Um, 
get attached to the material and then get attached to the building. Um, you know, here it shows insulation, which is which is common, uh, and you would definitely want to use that insulation in a cold climate. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about these systems is is they're mostly studied on their effect in cold climates because that's obviously where most of the the energy is spent um, uh, in the United States. It's it's on it's on buildings in northern climates. Um, and they're mostly focused on reducing heating costs as opposed to, you know, we're in a completely different situation here. We're reducing cooling costs. Um, so there's not a lot of study in terms of how it affects that. So um, having the panels here in a way obviates the need for that insulation, because if you're now, um, if, you're, if that insulation, if that wall is not getting hit by any solar radiation, um, that insulation is really not doing too much. Um, that insulation there is designed to slow the transmission of that uh, temperature from the exterior to the interior. But now, you know, we, we've kept that we've kept the exterior we, we've stopped that exterior wall that insulation from heating up, and now we've got an exterior temperature that's maybe ten degrees, you know, ten degrees different from what we want our interior uh, temperature to be, um, and with such a low you know, difference, you're just not going to get a lot of transmission to it. So it's basically, it's like putting a, a you know, just like the energy code currently allows for uh, reduction in solar heat gain on windows when it has a sunshade or some sort of projection above it, maybe a balcony or something like that. You know, we recognize the fact that reducing the direct radiation on the glazing, um, you know, obviates the need for some, um, some of its energy performance. This is a similar way. This is like a sunshade for the whole building. It's basically, you're 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 putting a sunshade in, the, in front of the building to to stop the uh, the building from heating up to begin with. So instead of instead of focusing on increasing the insulation in the wall and increasing the U value or the R value, I guess if we're talking. I'm I'm, 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 a, I'm a fenestration guy, so I talk U values, but maybe R values. So instead of focusing on improving the R value of the wall. It's a, it's a different approach to say, instead of stopping the transmission of heat from the exterior to the interior, let's stop the exterior wall from heating up to begin with. And then we don't have to worry about the heat transmitting through it. Yeah, Gene, I uh, once measured the temperature of a dark wall where the sun's radiant heat was directly striking it. Yep. And I came in at 167 degrees. Sure. And then I went just a few feet away where that same wall was totally shaded and the temperature dropped to, I believe it was 93 degrees, yep. like a 70 degree delta between the two. Exactly, exactly. It's, uh, you know, it's a unique situation here in Hawaii. It's all of our energy is um, problems that we have to deal with are where we have direct solar radiation, which is, you know, extremely intense. Um, but our ambient air temperature, most of the time, is just fine. Um, you know, it's like everyone comes home from work, right? And they first thing they do is get home from work and open up all the doors and windows and go sit in the garage for for an hour while the house cools down, right? Because it's 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 now 20, 30 degrees hotter inside the house than it is outside. Um, you know, the energy target for most people is I just want my house to be as cool inside as it is outside. You know I mean, it's it, the house would be comfortable if it was the same temperature inside as it is outside. So, um, a much different situation yeah. than even other southern climates. You know, we're not Las Vegas, we're not Phoenix, we're not where we have 120 degree air temperature outside. And um, but here's a here's an example of a building that actually has a has a uh, ventilated cavity rain screen system, and this is actually in the West Bank and and and, and Nazareth and the City Hall there. And you can actually see how the panels are actually offset by different depths from the building. So they don't have to all be at the same projection factor off the building. So it gives it a unique, a unique factor. And then there's some backlighting in there as well. So this is basically a, a rain, basically a, a sunscreen system, you know, for the building, um, the whole side of the building. So, and we do this quite a bit too, sometimes with the metal system. Sometimes you see out there with metal, um, vertical sunshade systems and things like that but it's usually it's usually it's on top of the fenestration right we're, we're concerned about heat coming in through the fenestration so we put a sunshade over it um this is a similar concept but it's it can be applied to the whole building it can apply to the whole it can apply to the whole uh, whole structure it doesn't have to apply just to fenestration and it and it's especially valuable here because like i said is we don't once you get that 
stop that wall from heating up, you don't have 110 degree air temperature outside that's going to continue to heat, you know, heat through the wall, right? You've, now you've, you've lowered that wall temperature to, to 80 degrees, some, you know, somewhere in the 80 degrees, you know, you know, or whatever the ambient air temperature is, you know, outside. And actually, and to your example, it actually, the walls would actually be cooler than your example of the 93 degree, you know, wall in the shade, because what's happening here is that when we've talked about the Venturi effect, the chimney effect, you, you, the cool air is constantly being brought in from the ground level and then being pulled out the top. So your, your cooler air is right near your ground, your ground because the cool air falls, the hot air sinks. So you actually have a constant breeze almost like blowing through that wall, which is even better than having a static you know, being, you know, static air. Yeah, Gene, we don't normally think of air as being an insulator, but I'm an energy oh. codes guy, and we reward uh, oh. buildings that have air instead of the direct radiant heat just passing by. We count that as a form of insulation. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm a fenestration guy, so that's how, you know, insulated glass works, we basically. Yeah. You know, we introduce an basically a half inch air space between the, the the glass and has a huge impact on 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 U value. So yeah, this is definitely you know similar to that, and and that actually comes into play. If we were in a northern climate, and we were if, if I was giving this presentation in in Chicago, we'd be talking more about how that airspace acts as an insulator. Um, it, it plays a big part. It, it plays a part here too. But it plays a bigger role when that airspace, that air insulating effect of that airspace plays a bigger role when you're in a northern climate. Like I said, when here we it's it's uh, you know, if we're keeping the air temperature on both sides of that the same, then it's it's then the insulating if we're close to each other, then the insulating effect isn't as important. What's really important for us is basically that solar heat gain, um, you know, stopping that radiant energy from hitting the wall to begin with. If we can stop that, if we can keep that wall at the 90 degrees instead of going to 160 degrees, I think you said, or something like that, then you don't have to be as concerned about the insulation factor of the wall and how that wall is going to stop that transmission um, through it. And so instead of throwing in, instead of throwing insulation at the problem, um, and in terms of stopping the transmission of this or slowing the transmission of the heat, because the, the insulation doesn't stop it, it just slows it, right? So instead of throwing insulation at the problem, it's it's it's, a, it's saying, well, let's stop it from heating up in the first place. You know, so yeah. In the energy code, we reward walls that are shaded. You know, you might have a small shade, or right. the best example in Hawaii would be Lanai's, where you've got at least ten feet of roof area shading the that wall that's under the Lanai, and we reward energy code, we go down way, way down in required insulation, which which saves money. And it makes sense because there's not that direct radiant heat from striking it. Now you are shading virtually 100% of exactly. the walls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to work 100% of the time as opposed to, you know, with a, mm -hmm. a, so like a, with a lanai, with a projection factor, it's going to work, you know, depending upon, you know, which way it's facing and the time of day. Mm -hmm. you know, some of that energy is still going to, still going to hit those walls. So yeah, I would be, oh. uh, I would be interested in seeing how the energy code could, could um, account for this. Well, and also you pointed out that this technology is also a, a decorative or decorative factor too. Sure. That, yeah. uh, that Jerusalem wall is just a perfect example. Right, right. It, it's right. an architectural uh, feature as in improving the aesthetics of a building. And there's tons of different materials available for it. I mean, I think, uh, um, you know, that's a porcelain system, but, you know, typically metal panels have been the, the, the predominant material um, that's been used. But, um, you know, GFRC uh, uh, is often used. And I, th I think I mentioned terracotta. Um, it's really, you know, up to the imagination of the architect in terms of the material they want to use. Um, yeah. There's a... Uh, People can use wood systems and fiber, you know, fiber uh, type systems. And yeah, in the uh, architecture field, we call this passive cooling. Yeah. We just the design of the building prevents the influx of of the radiant heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um, 
you know, it's interesting. The slide here I got is I have from the, is from the Middle East. You know, um, you know, one of the companies I work with that makes the porcelain panels does a tremendous amount of work in the Middle East and um, and uh, Africa and uh, and Spain. They're actually based out of Spain, which also has a very hot climate. Um, so there, a lot of their work is done um, um, with passive cooling, like you're talking about, because that's a um, the, the Middle East is a large market for that sort of design. They're, it's a, uh, they're very familiar with that concept. Um, so uh, more so, I think, than in the United States or even in Europe, um, a lot of the architecture there is built around passive cooling concepts. And, uh, and here in Hawaii, for very good reason, uh, PV panels or photovoltaic panels are very, very, very popular. And one, of course, it makes electricity and with the battery stores electricity. But a side effect is the fact that those panels are shading the roof. Yeah, absolutely. And if you notice, if you look closely at the panels, they are raised by at least, say, five, if not six inches. And that provides that airflow, airspace yeah. under the panel, yeah. which is, that's the horizontal equivalent of, of the vertical. Yeah, now that, well, that's critical, the, that's critical for the, that's critical for the efficacy of the panels. They got to keep, they lose their efficiency when mm -hmm. they try to heat up too much. So you got to keep your panels cool. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and you can even incorporate, you know, solar into your vertical wall panels if, you, if you'd like to. Um, mm -hmm. uh, use that as a cladding, use, your, use that as a cladding material. It's not out of the yeah. Yeah, that is obviously not as efficient as having a horizontal application. You have to maybe on your south wall, um, um, incorporate that. You know, mm -hmm. that could be used as well. I mean, the material you use is a tremendous amount of options uh, for the material that you can use. The key thing is is the distance from the wall uh, and all the open joints and the cavities, and having an open at the top, um, and uh, so the air flows. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and definitely you can use different reflectivities on the panel. I know, you know, the code allows for, uh, based on the reflectivity index of the cladding material, you know, some allowances. Um, and I think people sometimes struggle with, they don't want to have a really bright building, right? Um, in order to take advantage of the, the, uh, the code allowances for reflectivity, you kind of have to have a relatively bright color, right? Um, um, but if they want to have a darker color, um, it doesn't really work. Um, whereas this um, does when, when you're that heat isn't making it to the wall anyhow. So yeah. it's not necessarily that the cladding um, reflects that heat because the panel can still absorb that heat. It's still not going to get transferred to the structural wall. Uh, whereas if that, whereas if that, like you said, that dark, if you're using like a dark fiber cement and it's right on top as you're cladding and it's right on top of your structural wall, you know, it's going to heat up. Uh, more than if you had like a white cladding, right? Uh, the white cladding is going to reflect a lot more of the energy. Um, so we make allowances for that in the code. But in this case, because it's so far off the wall, it really shouldn't matter uh, whether the panel is absorbing or reflecting, you know, that energy. Yeah, uh, again, in, in the, the roofing code, we really, really uh, reward shading Yep. In, in the roof. And there is now the cool wall rating council. I was instrumental in, in founding that. And we're just getting our really good start. And it's going to be part of code within the next uh, year or so. Right. And certainly we're going to have to uh, include this as your, your technology as one of the, uh, the really cool wall factors. Yeah, well, I appreciate and, it. And yeah. reduce the amount of insulation required as a reward for that huge drop in, in radiant heat. Right. You know, I have a I have a I have a NASA study that was done by NASA uh, that I can send to you. I don't really have it up here or I can bring it up here. Um, but basically an independent study done in, uh, done on a uh, uh, a building for NASA in Houston and looking at their energy as they uh, before and after they put the ventilating cavity. Uh, on the building. So that would be something for you to take a look at as well. I, I'd be interested in receiving that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just um, a lot of the research, though, like uh, on the event like cavities is more focused on the benefits for northern climates, right? Mm -hmm. As we, we run into that a lot, right? There's not a lot of Hawaii specific studies or a lot of, you know, 
the incentive for people to do research on our particular climate just because we're so small, right? So uh, they, when they tend to do these energy studies, they tend to focus on how can I reduce my heating costs in Chicago? How, how does this affect my heating costs in Chicago? Not how does it affect my cooling costs in Hawaii, right? Yeah. No, that would make an excellent uh, paper for a grad student at the UH School of Architecture. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work closely with them. I got to can I pass your name on? If oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the uh, the basis? What's the bottom line of the NASA study that you mentioned? Uh, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it did show significant reductions in energy costs and cooling loads um, specifically. And it was basically a before and after energy consumption study uh, before they they did the rain screen panels. Sorry, before they did the, 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 the panels on it um, and after. Uh, yeah, and it's and, a very significant, you know, reduction in cooling costs. And climate psych, I don't know if anybody has had the, the good fortune to be in the south in the middle of the summer. Yeah, yeah. You have your combination of humidity plus right, right. heat. And yeah, you know, I mentioned, yeah, um, yeah. uh, you know, I mentioned, you know, you know, Las Vegas and Phoenix as examples where, you know, they still also have the issue of its of its 110 degrees for three or four months a year. Mm -hmm. So even if you can make the interior temperature the same as the exterior, you're still going to put your, you still got to run your air conditioner, right? Because it's still 100. Yes. Now you've only made it 110 degrees, right? Yes. Um, yes. And you, and then you've got the issue in the south, you know, in Florida, where okay, even if I make the interior temperature the same as the exterior, I still want to run my air conditioner because it's acting as a dehumidifier. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, because of the humidity. So we're we're in almost a unique situation where if I can just get my interior temperature to not be hotter than it is outside, mm -hmm. then I don't need to put the AC on. Passive cooling. Yeah. And on that very, very cheery note, Gene, yeah. we must bid you fond adieu. Thank you, okay. Gene. We're, Rudy, on, we're good on for time. Introducing okay, us you. to this wonderful uh, concept. Okay. And no, I appreciate Howard, it. I appreciate it very green. much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, that's our pleasure. Okay. Howard Wade, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.